So in our first video looking at units of measure, we'll be going through what is meant by metric and imperial units for length, mass and capacity. We use units as a way of understanding length, weight, or sometimes known as mass, or mass is sometimes known as weight, or capacity. Now we also use units for area and volume, which are merged in with length units. Now a particular unit is used in an attempt to keep the digit in front of it either whole number or as a three digit number. Now this is not only makes it easier for you to say, but it's also easier to understand as well. Now like place values in terms of units, tens, hundreds, etc, each unit of measure increases or decreases in size. However, though they may represent the same quantity, one will be easier to use and say and understand. So for example, ten, uh, 20 tens is the same as 200. So although they're the same quantity, there are two different ways of saying the same thing. However, saying 200 is definitely a lot easier to say and a lot easier to understand than 10, 20 tens. Also like 1400 is the same as 1.4 uh, thousand, which again is toss up between which one's easier to say, or you could split the units by saying 1400. So here there we've used a combination of units. Now there are two main types of measuring systems that are used around the world. One is called the metric system and the other is called the imperial system. Now the metric system is very similar to place value and increases in powers of 10, which makes it easier to understand, it's standardized and it's generally used as a modern measure around the world. Now imperial units is still used in parts of the world, but is sometimes classed as a old fashioned type of unit and involves different quantities equaling different amounts. Now here in the UK, we use a, we commonly use a mixture of metric and imperial units. It kind of depends on who you're talking to, what you're measuring as to which, whether it's imperial or metric units that we use to measure that particular thing. Whereas in other parts of the, the world, they tend to more standardize it and use the metric system and again, just to keep things consistent. Now let's just have a look at the types of units. Now it is important that you're able to know what a unit measures, but also whether they are metric and imperial or imperial along with their abbreviated notation. So in this list, we've got a list of the three main areas, which are length, uh, which I'm just going to try and use difficult pen. So I've got length, mass and weight, and capacity. Now the things written in white are what we class as being metric and the things written in yellow are what we class as imperial units. Now as you can see that each particular unit has got an abbreviated sort of abbreviation and so it's important that you recognize what these are because in maths although we do we don't do that much writing instead we use abbreviations to imply that that is being used. So now you might find that you may know some other types of length. So for example, you might go for paces. However, paces is more used to in terms of being yards. So it all depends on side person. And also looking at weights, you might be thinking, oh, ounces, I've heard of that in recipes. You might think teaspoons or tablespoons, but that's more of a measure of equipment rather than an actual quantified measurement. So it's kind of like an estimate of what it is because it's usually a teaspoon is the same in every kitchen which is why they're being used but it's not an accurate scale it's just more of a something that you could like a pinch of salt um it's just a case of is my pinch the same as your pinch so we're digressing so you might find that there are other units that you might be able to think of that you may have think that i've missed off the list but these are the ones that are more common when it comes to learning maths so it is important that you know each of these units and know their abbreviations and also know whether they are metric or imperial units. Now, in terms of things you need to learn in this particular area. So the first thing you need to know is, as I've mentioned, you need to know whether a unit is, represents length, mass or weight or capacity. You also need to know whether a unit is classed as being metric or imperial. And the third thing, which is tending to be more popular now, particularly with textbooks and questions you might do in your classroom, is what is the best unit to use? Now, this is a really, really important skill to be able to do. So depending on what it is you're measuring, there will be a unit that is best to use for that particular measurement. So for example, if I'm gonna measure the length of a tablet, as in a me medicine tablet, not an iPad or a uh, Samsung Galaxy tab, um, then you might think I'm going to use millimeters because it's going to be easy. I wouldn't use meters or kilometers because that's a massive unit. 
uh, if I'm measuring how long it takes the distance from me to travel from home to school, then I might use miles, I might use kilometers. It's unlikely that I'm going to use centimeters because the number of that is going to be huge. And likewise, I'm not going to use kilometers to measure how tall I am because it will be a ridiculously small number that goes in front. So every unit is appropriate for the measure. So for example, if I'm going to measure the uh, height of someone, then I could go for centimeters, I could go for meters, I could use feet. It's unlikely I'm going to use kilometers or yards, let's say. If I'm going to measure how much a bag of sugar weighs, then I might use grams, I might use kilograms, I might use ounces, but I'm not necessarily going to use tons. Um, so things like this is important that you establish. And again, if I just go back, so it's important that you think of something that you measure using each of the units you can see on your screen. So think of something that you'd measure in millimeters. Think of something you'd measure in centimeters. Think of something you measure in meters, kilometers, miles, yards, feet, inches, and the same with mass. So nanograms, you're probably looking at a grain of rice, uh, milligrams, maybe a chocolate bar, kilograms, maybe a weight of someone, a ton, maybe the weight of a car, ounces would be some ingredients, pounds could be a person, uh, again it could be food, and stone is probably more likely used in human weight. Then milliliters you're probably looking at liquids, so you're probably looking at a glass of water, centiliters which is more of a European scale, but again that would generally be like a bottle of water, liters is a larger bottle, gallons is probably used in terms of liquids for gardening or petrol etc. Uh, pints is probably again used in drinks and cubic centimeters or cubic liters etc that tends to be more of a volume but again because there is a conversion uh, a conversion of centiliters i mean center cubic centimeters to liters that's why i've added it to the capacity list but that one you've probably not seen around but again it's probably used more in maths than anywhere else um, around you now what i would strongly recommend that you do is next time you go to the supermarket try and find particularly with mass and capacity try and find different items of food and drink that you would all just general items that are measured in using those units and try and get a range of things that you can use or where these units are more commonly seen and that will definitely improve your math skills and understanding units and whether they're metric or imperial. Now I will put some general notes in the description below but I strongly recommend that after watching this video I'd probably move on to converting units in where we'll be looking at converting one type of unit to another and also converting from metric to imperial and imperial to metric which again is a very very popular question that comes up in exams and homeworks and classwork.